My name is Matt Gracie, and I'm an engineer on the professional services team at Security Onion Solutions. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Elasticsearch Index Lifecycle Management, or ILM, and its role in the Security Onion platform. We'll talk a little bit about the basic concept of ILM, how it's configured by default in Security Onion, what other safeguards are in place to keep your storage from filling up, and what options you have for optimizing it for your environment. Then, we'll take a look at how to check or adjust these settings in the Security Onion console. Let's get started. To begin, let's answer this simple question. What is ILM? To quote the documentation from our friends at Elastic, you can configure index lifecycle management policies to automatically manage indices according to your performance, resiliency, and retention requirements. Put more simply, ILM allows you to specify how you want your data stored and for how long. If you have data from certain sources that you'd like to retain for longer or shorter periods of time, ILM can do that. If you have some extra hardware with slower disk that you'd like to use to store older data that's no longer being updated, ILM can do that too. And if you'd like to set a time limit for how long you retain a particular class of data before deletion, that's also configured in ILM. It's important to note here that Elastic ILM is based entirely around the age of the data in your environment and not the amount of disk space that it takes up. This is a change from older versions of Security Onion, where we use the Curator module to handle some of these lifecycle duties. Starting in Security Onion 2.4, there is no more Curator, only ILM. The indices in your Security Onion deployment exist in one of three phases. An index that is hot is still being actively updated and is also being queried. This is the newest data in your Elasticsearch cluster, the fresh log data that is most likely to be accessed for investigation. Warm indices are still available for query, but are no longer being actively updated. For example, your Zeek logs from the recent past might be warm. You still want to be able to check what's in there, but it's not as common, and you may be willing to live with slightly slower performance on those queries. The next phase is cold, for data that is rarely queried and is definitely no longer being updated. Cold data is for when you receive an inquiry from your threat intelligence colleagues asking if you had any traffic from a particular IP six months ago. When the data has reached the end of its useful lifespan, it enters the deleted phase, which is exactly what it sounds like. The relevant indices are removed from disk so the space can be reclaimed. The default ILM settings in Security Onion are fairly conservative, as you might expect. After all, we need to make sure that the platform is functional by default for a variety of different use cases and deployment models. When data is freshly ingested, it is in the hot phase. It is added to an appropriate index according to its data type, and that index is rolled over and a new index created after either 30 days or when the primary shard size reaches 50 gigabytes. If you have a log source producing a lot of data, like Zeek on a busy network link, this rollover might happen multiple times a day as the shards reach that 50 gig threshold. If you have a less prolific log source, say NetFlow data coming over from a low utilization branch office, you might have a single index open for days or weeks at a time, maybe even the full 30 days. 30 days after that rollover occurs, the index is then moved to the warm phase. Practically speaking, what does this mean? On a standalone deployment, it means very little. You've only got one node in your Elasticsearch cluster, so data of all different phases will coexist until it's time for indices to be deleted. If you've got a distributed deployment with multiple search nodes, it may mean that the index is moved to a different server that's been designated as a warm node. It's common for distributed deployments to tier their ILM functionality based on the speed of the storage that's available. New hot data requires higher file system performance to keep up with new data being written, as well as frequent queries, while older data can be relegated to repurposed hardware with larger capacity, lower performance spinning disk storage. There, the data is still available, but the queries might be a little slower. 60 days after that rollover, there is another transition from warm to cold. And finally, after 365 days, the data reaches the deleted phase and will be wiped out. So, in a perfect world where you have infinite amounts of storage, all of your log data will be retained for at least a year. The minimum of 30 days it spends in hot, 
another 30 in warm, and then about 300 days in the cold phase before getting deleted. But you don't have an infinite amount of storage. So if these are the default settings, why hasn't your Security Onion deployment exhausted its disk space? Well, we currently include a safety net as part of the basic installation. There's a script called SO Elasticsearch Indices Delete that manages size-based deletion of indices if your disk begins to get too full. By default, it runs every five minutes, and if the total amount of disk being consumed by Elasticsearch across all the nodes in your cluster is greater than 50%, it will delete indices until the threshold is reached. In a standalone deployment, that 50% figure makes sense. After all, you need to save some disk space for raw logs, packet captures, and everything else that Security Onion produces and stores. In a distributed environment, though, where the only thing being stored on your search nodes is your Elasticsearch indices, it might make more sense to adjust that value. I'll show you how shortly in our demonstration. Starting in version 2470, you have the option of disabling SO Elasticsearch indices delete entirely and relying solely on ILM for managing your indices. Once you've got your life cycles dialed in for your particular environment, that might be something to consider to make sure you don't unexpectedly lose data to this script. Starting in version 24150 of Security Onion, we're planning to disable this script by default on distributed multi-node installations. So please watch the release notes for more information about that. Please note that this script doesn't prioritize deletion by how old the data is. Which indices get deleted comes down to a number of factors, including when the index was originally created and its name. So if you have operational requirements around retaining data for specific amounts of time, you'll want to get your ILM figured out in tune to make sure you don't unexpectedly lose something when the disk fills up. Now that we know a little bit about ILM, let's take a look at the tuning settings in the Security Onion console. Everything that you might need to tweak can be handled through the web interface, so let's start by logging in there. Once you've logged in, click on Administration and then Configuration on the left-hand side of the browser window. That will open the configuration interface where we can change our Elasticsearch settings. Some of the options that we're going to be looking at are in the Advanced interface. We can enable that with the Options menu here at the top of the window. This slider will enable the Advanced settings. Be warned, it will take a few seconds to render because the tree on the left-hand side is much larger with everything visible. The configuration items that we're looking for are under the Elasticsearch entry. One thing I want to mention is that there's an entry here under Elasticsearch for retention. This is where we can find that retention percentage that's being used by the SO Elasticsearch Indices Delete script. By default, this setting is 50. That is, the script will delete Elasticsearch indices if the total amount of disk space being used across all of the nodes in the Elasticsearch cluster goes above 50%. On a standalone, this is a reasonable default, because you've got to save space for the packet captures, raw logs, and other items that are sharing the file system. If you've got a distributed deployment, you can probably bump this up a bit, because the search nodes aren't storing all of that additional data. As I said earlier, though, that script is really more of a safety net. For finer grain control over our data, we want to tune ILM for the environment. You'll notice over here on the right-hand side, there are some Elasticsearch-related quick links for the warm, cold, and delete phases. If you want to make global changes to how Elasticsearch handles all of its different indices, you can do that here. For example, if you want to change the time span before a hot index is changed to warm, you can click on the Warm Phase link here. The min age attribute here is 30 days by default. That is, 30 days after the index rolls over as a hot index, it will be moved to warm. If we want to shorten that, say change it to two weeks or 14 days, we can adjust the setting here in the box and then click the green check mark to confirm. In a standalone deployment, this won't really make much of a difference. After all, a standalone deployment has all of its Elasticsearch indices stored on the same node, independent of their stage in the lifecycle. But if you're using a distributed deployment with dedicated search nodes for hot data versus warm data, when an index reaches that 14-day mark, it will be transferred from the hot node to the warm node. We can make similar changes for the cold and delete phases, 
so data is stored where we want and then ultimately deleted when we want it to be. Now, this applies to all the indices that we're storing in Security Onion. What if I want to retain my Zeek data in hot for 30 days, but move my endpoint logs to warm in a week? How do I set this per index? The answer is that we do that in the same interface, just setting per index instead of the global setting we're looking at now. We just need to click on the X here to remove the filter and see the other options. You'll see here that each of these entries starting with SO corresponds to an Elasticsearch index. Underneath each of these is another set of lifecycle policy settings. So, for example, if I want to delete my PFSense firewall logs after 180 days, I just find the appropriate entry, I open up the policy, I open up phases, I open up delete, and here I can set the min age to 180. I click on the green check mark, and now my firewall logs will be purged after 180 days instead of a full year. Note that this change will only affect my PFSense logs. Any other logs where I haven't added an index specific override like this will obey the global settings. Keep in mind that every index needs to go through the full life cycle, from hot to warm to cold to delete it. So if you want to delete something very quickly, say after 14 days, you'll need to shorten the other phases as well. You can't have delete with a lower minimum age than warm or Elasticsearch won't know what to do with it. One last thing I want to show you. I've mentioned a couple times that you can designate particular search nodes for holding hot, warm, or cold data. That's also configured here in this interface. The options here under SO roles are what tell Elasticsearch which data you want stored on each node. You can see here that the default settings for a search node are data, data hot, ingest, and transform. Data is a catch-all term that means data from any stage in the lifecycle, so by default a search node will store logs of any age. If you want a search node to store only warm data, you would make a node-specific configuration change here and set it to data underscore warm only. That would tell Elasticsearch that only indices tagged as warm should be stored there and it will organize the data accordingly. There are some other options here in this role configuration that might be useful for more complex deployments. All the details are available in the Elasticsearch section of our documentation at securityonion.com docs. So that's how we set the age-based lifecycle policies for the different data we're collecting in Security Onion. But obviously, in order to do this, we need to know how much storage we need to allocate for every day. If we want to keep data hot for 30 days, and we've got a terabyte of space on our hot nodes, we want to make sure we're not generating more than 30 gigs of data a day or so because the disk space will be exhausted. There are a couple ways to see how much data your Security Onion deployment is currently storing so you can make your ILM plans. The easiest is through Kibana. First, click on the menu in the upper left corner, then select Stack Management. The information we want is listed here under Index Management. To see everything, we'll need to click on the slider here to include hidden indices. Now, if you want to see, for example, how many gigs of Zeek data you're storing per day, just type Zeek into the search box here at the top. The indices with Zeek in the name will be listed down below along with how much disk space they're using. Now, this is obviously a demo environment that doesn't see a lot of traffic. But if you're rolling over your Zeek indices regularly, this will give you a rough idea of how much space you need per day to store those logs. If you're creating a new 100 gig index every four days, for example, that means you're going to need enough space to store 25 gigs per day, or 750 gigs for a 30 day period. Going through this exercise for all of the different data types you're ingesting will give you a good idea of how many days worth of logs you'll be able to retain before deletion. Like most tuning efforts, keep in mind that this is an iterative process. If you're adding more log sources, for example, if you're collecting endpoint logs with Elastic Agent and you roll out a bunch of new workstations, or you start collecting logs from a cloud service or network firewall that you weren't collecting before, you may need to come back here and revisit your ILM settings. By default, 
you want to keep your total disk utilization on your search nodes under the low watermark of 80% so they have some room to work. If your ILM settings are unrealistic and you're trying to store more data than you have space for, it can cause serious issues with your Elasticsearch installation, including data loss or corruption. I hope you found this video useful and that it's helped to demystify index lifecycle management for you. If you have more questions about the specific features and capabilities I've talked about, there's information available in our documentation at securityonion.com docs. If you're having issues with setting up ILM in your environment, feel free to start a new thread on our discussion forum at securityonion.com discuss. And finally, if you're interested in professional services and support for your deployment, you can reach us at securityonion.com support. Thanks for your time and have a great day.